There I was, minding my own business. I thought I'd get everything wrapped up for the day. I had my Tim Stiton video planned. I was going to talk about Lopetegui. Stiton's got some power now. Even Lopetegui, in his interview, he turned around, he said, the technical director, he's, he's dealing with transfers. I'm dealing with the stuff on the pitch. I thought, yeah, that's the video. That's the video. And then Lucas Pacatar comes along. Well, not so much him, the FA, and they charge him. Now, this is something we've talked about a little and a little bit on this channel. And as much as I think last week, I said, hold on, they were meant to charge him this week. So I actually said, clearly, clearly I've heard wrong. Clearly I've heard wrong. Well, obviously, clearly not, because actually they have charged him. And it was a case of either charge him or drop it. They've decided to charge him. Um, and as every minute goes by, more stuff's coming out, more evidence is coming out. And now Gio has joined me. We're not going to talk about Stuyton and Lopetegui because Gio thinks he's got a steer on, on, a, on a case. Because as we know, even though it's not a legal case, we do have our, our, our laws in this country set on precedence. That's, that's, how it, that's how it's done. And Gio's found a precedent, haven't you, mate? Well, LM has, one of our subscribers, so I reacted last night to it live, and it's all quite emotional. I've calmed down a little bit, thought things through. My conclusion isn't really a good one, truth be told, sure. but during the live stream, LM was saying, oh, there's this person that done something similar, and this is his punishment. And funnily enough, um, it was somebody that played for Stratford Town, and his name is Kainan Keenan Isaac. And if you just Google this name, K-Y-N-A-N Isaac, um, it'll come up. Um, now, initially, I thought, how can this guy from Stratford Town manage to sort of be involved in sp spot fixing? Because you can't bet on Stratford Town players get booed. But it was in an FA Cup game. So he obviously took advantage of the fact that he's playing an FA Cup game. So it said, and this was a couple of, this was published in 2022, um, Stratford upon Avon Herald. And it said that the FA has handed a 10 year ban to a Stratford Town player after he's found guilty of spot fixing during an FA Cup game he played in. Um, he was informed of his career ending ban for an investigation. And basically, the FA got a tip off and the fullback was guilty of spot fixing by deliberately earning a yellow card. He failed to comply with the FA's investigation, breached the FA rules by placing multiple bets, including several on his own team. So he ended up doing other things as well as the spot fixing and you end up having a lot of suspended sentences as well in regards to the fact he was he ended up betting on like 250 times but they actually just hit him with a 10-year ban for the spot fixing and basically decided well that's his career finish but there's a 12-month suspended sentence for the 258 times you bet as well so there's one case of that other people have found punishments in various different sports in different countries which aren't really applicable but just for because subscribers have sent me this information. There was a cricketer in Pakistan who did something similar, and he actually went to prison for what for his spot fixing. Um, so it's a serious, it's a, a, an incredibly serious punishment if found guilty. I think it's a lot more serious than Ivan Tony and Tenali of Newcastle who were betting on the outcome of games. Paquette is essentially being accused. Of fixing spot Manipula fixing. manipulating yeah. the game itself yeah. for his own financial gain is, yeah. is was is the suggestion. Well, um ten year yeah. ban for yeah, okay. I mean this this is I mean it's incredible, isn't it, really? Because you, you have this idea as a West Ham fan, and I won't have been the only one when they sort of heard the news that that thought, oh well, that's sort of good because it's gonna keep him at West Ham for for a little while. But then when you hear something like that, that's just bad news. Um, I, I would, I'm going to speculate here, totally speculate, that that wouldn't be covered by any insurance. So that is just a massive, massive financial hit, a massive loss for West Ham. Um, what I would say is, and this was the case, this is what I was discussing um, a few weeks ago, where there seemed to be a growing confidence, particularly from Paquetta's representatives, that the deal would go through. Um, not the ban, the deal to take Paqueta to Manchester City. To the point you felt that there was some pressure from his agents to put pressure on the club to accept a lower bid rather than the £85 million pound buyout clause. But it was definitely absolute conviction from them that the FA would drop the charges. That's why I spoke about it so so confidently to start with. And I thought, well, hold on a second, because very much told they had to 
they had to they had to charge him or drop it by a certain date. Clearly, that date is sort of now, which is why we're getting this now. What I do, what what really worries me above and beyond what you just said, was that there there was suggestions that there could be legal action taken against the FA. That actually a case of Lucas Paqueta and his team might be thinking, you've wasted our time. You've cost us a transfer. And actually, we're going to litigate against you. With that in mind, the FA would have known that. The FA would have known that actually Paqueta and his team may have been considering, allegedly, coming after them. Armed with that information, they've still decided to charge him. So all I would speculate is the FA must be pretty confident in the evidence that they've got. Depends how you look at it, actually, because I'm a, I look at it the other way in the sense that if the FA decided not to charge him, it, you might open up the door for Paqueta's team to sue the FA. Say, well, clearly he's done nothing wrong. He's missed out on his move to Manchester City. You've cost him this much in earnings, etc. But I feel like it's come as a result of Paqueta's team playing chicken with the FA a little yeah. bit and go and charge him or we're going to sue you in the FA. I feel like you've backed the FA into the corner. And I think that's a very dangerous thing to do when you back a powerful organisation into a corner. They tend not to back down. And also the second thing is taking your West Ham specs off you. And this is difficult sometimes. Last night I struggled a little bit to do that. And then when I thought about it from a sort of a neutral perspective, I tried to think about it. If this was a, a fool and player or whatever, how would I feel? And that is, if a player is threatening legal action, I think, well, if he can't back down, if you have to go after them a little bit, and say, well, come on then, let's let's have this out in in a court of law. We'll go to the third party, independent, and, and, and get this sorted. And you'll either be guilty or not guilty. If not guilty, fine, you win. If guilty, then we're going to hit you, and we're going to hit you hard here. And I feel like Paqueta's team has almost called their bluff a little bit. It has backfired massively. But also, I, if it was a non-West Ham player, I would not want the FA to back down unless the investigation had come to a conclusion and they were satisfied there was no wrongdoing. But if they thought there was even a chance that this person was guilty, even if it was just circumstantial evidence, which in the public domain, that's all it is at the minute. And the fact that it's gone on for nine months, I feel like perhaps that's all they've, that's all they've got, which is just coincidences. But... Even looking at that, again, Clarence Blue specs off. It feels hard to be confident that he's not guilty. Yeah. When you take everything into consideration, it just can be prove he's guilty. And what they maybe they're confident that what they've got is going to be enough to prove that Lucas Paqueta is possibly guilty of this one. And I think it's maybe been a bit of a dangerous game from Paqueta's team in this regard. But I guess the one positive for West Ham is it's going to come to a conclusion soon because it's rumbled on for a long time now. And while, like you said, it won't be covered in insurance, I'd imagine if he is found guilty, he might open up a legal avenue for West Ham to sue Lucas Paqueta, a bit like what Chelsea did with uh, Mewtwo when he, yep, was, yep. when he he was found of wrongdoing because it's... You know, will be in Paqueta's contract. He's not allowed to do anything no. like this. So he's breached his contract with West Ham United if found guilty. Um, but at least it's going to come to a conclusion at some point soon. He's got a couple of weeks to sort of respond to this charge. And then he'll go to the tribunal, I assume, pretty quickly. But Paqueta's team need this wrapped up one way or another because Copa America's around the corner. Paqueta's in the Brazil squad. You know, we know... When this allegation first came out, they dropped him. New manager now, so they might have a different view on it, but it could could put his short term international career into jeopardy as well. So there's no there's no winners here. There's absolutely there's uncertainty for Paqueta, it's for West Ham and for Man City. Whether or not we care, it's Man City's summer transfer plans might actually hinge on what the outcome of this. So nobody wins here. It's a horrible situation. I'm really nervous about it. All of a sudden. Because, like I said, when I look at it from a neutral point of view, I think this this is this is not good. Just it's too there's too many coincidences. Let's look at what we do know, and that is residents of Paqueta Island opened accounts with Betway, placed substantial sums on Lucas Paqueta and the player from La Liga to be booked. Did the double? It won. And when you look at those yellow cards he acquired in those four games, two of them in particular, I, it, it, 
he doesn't look too good in those in those bookings he got that time wasting one against Bournemouth in particular. I didn't think it looked great. It looked when you look at it now, it looks a bit suspicious. Um, I'm yeah. worried, Gonzo. I am worried. And so you should. And so you should be. And you've got to take your your West Ham spectacles off on this because it's easy to be outraged. And because naturally we're we're tribal by our nature. We 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 tend to you know love our players and and you know whilst we can slag them off if they have a bad game. With anything else, no one else can. Um, yeah. So the truth of the matter is, no, nobody knows. Somebody did actually ask me um, quite quite soon after the news broke, and I said, oh, "Have you heard anything?" And well, a couple of people asked. I said, "Well, we wouldn't. Nobody would. You know, the club are not going to leak anything because they don't know anything. Um, the players' representatives are not going to leak anything. They don't know anything. If well, if they can charge, but they will not actually submit any evidence until we're hearing." They're, then what they're not going to do is sabotage their own case by by leaking the FA are not going to leak evidence to David Sullivan or, or leak it to, to uh, Team Paqueta. They're not going to, going to keep it for the hearing. They're going to go, bang, there you go. This is what we got. Here's a paper trail or whatever, or whether they have or whether they haven't. So, yeah, you know, we we, we don't know. And I think anyone that claims to know, well, you, you'd, you'd have you basically, you'd probably be breaking, well, certainly FA rules and the law by letting it be known anyway. So, um this, this stuff, there's going to be very high-powered solicitors doing this. It ain't good. I think if I was Manchester City, I'd be saying, that's it. I'm out. Uh, definitely, definitely on on that one. It's just not worth not worth the risk. The best case scenario is, is innocent. Um, I think this is a level above what happened before because now it's, it's not an investigation. It's a charge. Um, I think he's really well at the start of the season to put it to the back of his mind. I think even it, it you say it's soon, it could also still drag on. Both yeah. are possible. Could drag on to the start of next season. So you, you don't even know what's what's going on here. Um and it's it's hard to speculate. I'd like to sit here and you know, all you can do is feelings. There's no point me saying, Oh, I suspect he'll be cleared or I suspect he'll be guilty. None of us know the evidence. We we can't and we, we we cannot because the investigators and investigators and solicitors. No, no one's leaking this to Fabrizio Romano because you know it's it's just it's just not going to happen. Um, not the evidence anyway. So I'm the same as you, mate. I'm um I'm crapping it. I was going to say to you, what's your hunch? But there's almost no point. We just got to sit and wait and see. Yeah, my 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 hunch is, and I'm just this is purely based on what is in the public domain. Mate, right? that's all it is. And it's everyone knows the same stuff as everyone else in regards to this. Like. Gonzo said, there's no in the nose here. There's just what it what has been leaked already. And my hunch is that it's just, there's just too many coincidences for me. So I think he, at best, perhaps had knowledge of it. But I'm, whether he got paid or not, that's what I'm perhaps... I'm not convinced he got paid per se, but he might have known what was going on in order for people, whether it be friends, family members or whatever, in order to benefit off the back of it, because like I said, the, the people creating new accounts betting substantial sums on this particular outcome and it happening. And like I said, when you look at the video footage, it's not good. It's 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 not it's it doesn't look great on his behalf. And that that's what it's not like it's a harsh yellow card like Edson Alvarez against Man City. There's no way you could convince me that that was done with the intention of getting a yellow card. It was a clean tackle. It was just unlucky. Yeah. But there's been some bookings Paquette has picked up where it's just silly. It is, it's just stupid. And the one against Bournemouth in particular is the one that I look at. I think that is, it, it don't look too pretty. The other thing is he's got that charges in regards to compliance, which is a bit strange given that Paquette, as teams always insisted, is complying and giving yeah, everything over. Sure. But that's easy to prove. That's easy yeah, to yeah. get rid of. Look, here, here's the evidence. We gave the FA everything they wanted. Thank you. Move on. Likewise, easy for the FA. Say, actually, here's a here's our correspondence. Here's our email requests for this, that, and the other. We didn't get it, so um, that's one thing that Stratford Town guy did. He didn't hand everything over. There was missing text messages and phone calls and call logs and had bits missing and stuff like that. So um, it's I, just that whether they can prove he's done something or not, and that's what I'm hopeful he hasn't done. But I, in a weird way, I'm pleased it's happened now because it was going to happen at some point. The club have now got plenty of time to prepare for this in terms of a transfer right. window. The club, this is not a surprise now. It's Newcastle, Tenali, transfer window shut, Tenali got banned, yeah. banned. Hang on a minute. What? We just lost our star player. Yeah. <laughs> just nothing. We, we've got the heads up here. The club can start 
whether they're trying to bring somebody in on loan or they're, whatever they're doing, you've almost got to try and plan for next season without Lucas Paqueta, I think, which is going to be difficult because he's worth so much money. And to replace Paqueta, you're probably going to need tens of millions. But I think the club have to get a little bit creative here. And even if it's just saying to George Earthy, look, son, you're part of the first team next season now. But the club have now got and Lopetegui. <laughs> Welcome to, West Ham. Welcome, Welcome to West Ham. <laughs> Welcome to West Ham. Yeah, that guy that was going to be a key part next season. Yeah, that wouldn't bother me. What a first day. What yeah. a first day. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, listen, the club can now prepare a little bit for the transfer window with knowledge of what is happening. So there's no surprise factor for West Ham. The, the fact he's been charged is maybe a surprise, but when the transfer window opens in three, four weeks' time, you know it's part of the situation here, so let's get let's get ready for it. It'll just be I'll be angry. I'll be really angry if he's found guilty. I'll be really angry because yes. no. Listen, I'm a fan of Lucas Paquetta. I hope he's innocent. But yeah, nobody's but if, bigger if he's than he's, he's also stitched us up. Yeah, he stitched yeah. everybody up. Um, yeah. and shame on him. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, listen, Gio, thanks, mate. You've ruined me lot with Steyton video. I have to wait. It's plenty of time. We've got the whole summer. Uh, actually, that's, uh, I'd much rather be doing that, by the way, than this. This is this is bad news. There's no there's no doubt about it. Um, listen, give us a thumbs up on the video. I would normally say comment as well. <laughs> to be honest with you, it's a bit of a minefield. I wouldn't bother if I were you. Mm-hmm.